you can almost taste it in the air right now. It's Essen Spiel time. That means we've got lots of games coming out. Have you checked out the VGG list yet? Are you planning to go to Essen Spiel? Or are you just looking for a list of games to pick up after the fair? Well, I've got 15 games for you to check out. Hey, Board Gamers, BJ from Board Game Gumbo here, back in the Gumbo Pot, talking about the Essen Spiel games. There's a list out. W. Eric Smith has a fantastic list on BGG, and I've used that list to kind of screen out the games that I would have purchased or at least demoed if I'd gone to the fair. Now, a couple of caveats. These are not in any particular order, although the first two would probably be the first two games I would definitely buy. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even demo them. I'd just go straight to the booth to pick those up. And number two, this is a list all about my favorite genre of games. It's Euro style games. So if that's the kind of games you're excited about, let's take a look at that list and see if we share some. If you have any that I missed, make sure you post in the comments below because I'd love to check those out. There's over 1,100 games and I've gone through them all, but I'm sure I'm going to miss some as we go through. But let's get right to that list and see what's on the top games from Essence Spiel that I want to check out. All right, number one on the list, and it's definitely number one is Beyond the Horizon from Cranio Creations. This is a game where the Fleeples, Ben uh, Pinchback, Matt Riddle, and Adam Hill are have teamed up with the original designer of Beyond the Sun, Dennis K. Chan, and they've come out with sort of a standalone prequel. It, it's, uh, it's taking the beloved tech tracks, the technology tree that we see in the, in the main game, and they've added a civilizational component. So it's sort of a sim, ga sim game where, where everybody's competing to try to build the best civilization to create the environment to be able to get out of the solar system. But we're not there yet. So I like the fact that they've kept that tech tree, although obviously they've redesigned some aspects of it for this particular game. But I really like the fact that we get, we've got this board that has even more engine building than the, the original game along with these tiles that we're going to be placing. And those are in conjunction, but we've got that puzzle of trying to build that engine so we can get the best, you know, the best civilization to win the game. Now, it still retains that one worker placement type of rules that, you know, that action selection. So uh, I, I, everything, I, everything I like, everything I've seen so far is something I like. So I would run straight to the cranial creations and I would have picked this one up. All right, number two on the list, and this is definitely a number two, would be Bomb Busters from Cocktail Games and Pegasus Spiel. It's designed by Hisashi Ayashi, and I'd actually highlighted it on our uh, podcast about uh, Gen Con. But now that I'm seeing people playing it, it's made, it's made it even more important for me to try to get my hands on a copy. I would have run straight to that booth to pick this one up. The conceit of the game is that we're all cooperatively working on uh, as bomb diffusers, and there's a, le a 66 levels of missions that we're going to try to complete. So I'm getting kind of a the crew or mission deep deep sea type of a vibe but at the same time with a theme that i find a lot cooler you know the idea of trying to defuse the bombs before something happens coupled with the fact that the game uses this kind of whimsical artwork to you know kind of, kind of soften up the theme a little bit it's not as harsh as you would think you know bomb busting blowing up that that's a pretty a pretty rough theme but it's not when it uses this really beautiful artwork so this is a game that I, I trust a lot of people that have already played it and said they liked it step hodge for instance from all the meeples of the rainbow she's played it she loves it so this was one that was already on my to watch list but it moves right to to buy for me so if i were at essen this is one i would pick up bomb busters from pegasus spiel all right next up is a game that attracted me basically because of the name of the game and also because of the artwork on the cover and then as I looked at the game mechanics, I'm like, okay, this is something that, that's really interesting. And that one is Widero from TGC Factory. Now, if you look at it, if, if you liked walking into Verano and you, li you like the way those colorful buildings lined up, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting it just from an artwork standpoint. Apparently, this particular town has that similar, beautiful, different colored buildings on there. But it's the combination of all the different mechanisms that are really getting me excited it's got this kind of a blind bidding uh, mechanism along with you know trying to uh, trying to get these 
these cards and, and action play that's going to score you the most points in the game. There's not a lot of information about it, but what I've seen so far, it's something I like. I'd, I would definitely demo this one and might even want to pick this one up if I were gone. That's Quidero from TGC Factory, an absolutely gorgeous looking game. All right, let's turn to the next one. And this one is all based on Toy Factor, and that's Babylon, which is a game from Geek Attitude Games. And when I was going through the list, some, sometimes things, you know, it might be a name, it might be a designer. This one was all about the wow, right? It's a 3D modular board that the players are going to build. And the game designers promise that it's not only good for families, but it's also got some deeper choices that Euro gamers are going to like. So if you get the combination of a game that just pops on the table, has some really cool mechanics, but I can still play with my family, okay. Babylon is one I really want to check out. And I'd love to hear if anybody goes to S and see if I'm right. Is this one that's going to really look good on the table and uh, and just make you want to just pull it out of game night every time? So that's Babylon from Geek Attitude Games. All right, next up on the list is a game that caught my eye just because of the cover. And that's The Yellow House that's published by Mandu Games. Now, this game is got a great setting. It's Van Gogh building a house for artists in this little small French town, and he invites the artists to come move in. One of those artists is Gauguin. What happens next? They all start debating about what's important about art. So it's a, a game for two players, and it's really light. It's only gonna take 20 or so 20 or 30 minutes, but it's designed by a designer that really intrigues me, and, and that's Gionil, who per, who designed the game Ptolemy, a two-player trick-taking game that I absolutely adore. I love the whimsical artwork on the cards. I love the, the crunchy gameplay and how it only takes 15 or 20 minutes, but it always feels like a much bigger game every time you play. And that's, that's what I'm getting from the vibes from the Yellow House. Gorgeous art, two-player game, perfect date night, all about arguing about what's important about art history. I'm in. I'm in. Let's just make sure that as a date night game, we're not arguing too much about art ourselves. So that's uh, The Yellow House. Check it out. A lot of the games on the list catch my eye because of the theme. And this next one is one of those for sure. And this one's called Ada's Dream. It's being published by Alley Cat Games, who makes a lot of Euro games that I do like. This game in particular is a game that's by Tony Lopez and has an interesting theme about players trying to help Ada Lovelace build the first computer. That, there's been some computer games out there. I just haven't hit one that I really like. But I like the idea that I see from this one, especially because if you put dice on a rondelle with a cool theme, I'm going to check it out. So that's all it took for me to get excited about this game. I don't know a lot about the mechanics yet, but the what I hear about it with the dice on the rondelle, it's something I would definitely check out. A port to games makes some of my favorite games, and Salt Fjord looks like it could join those. Uh, there's a little bit of a cheat here because Salt Fjord is a game from the same designers as Santa Maria and kind of takes that game mechanics, shines it up a little bit, but puts it in a new theme. And the theme is about a fishing village called Salt Fjord. Apparently fishing is very important to their lifestyle and to their economy. And what I like about this is it's got the same variable setups, the same designers from Revive and Santa Maria and Bad Company. And I like all those games a lot. In fact, Revive and Bad Company are two of my favorite games of all times. This is one where you've got dice drafting uh, with a mechanic similar to Santa Maria. I would have checked this one out. Stan Kardonsky has been killing it with a lot of the games. They just seem to speak to me and Jared when we play here in the Gumbo Pot. So Minos, Dawn of the Bronze Age from Board and Dice Games. That's one I would definitely go check out. It's got a theme about ancient Greece and Crete, that civilization there. This looks kind of like uh, ancient Greece worthy successor not the same game but kind of a successor to endless winter and that's all you have to tell me if you tell me uh, a game that that kind of takes that some of those mechanics in endless winter and bumps it up with with dice drafting and it's designed by stan kordonsky i'm in all right the next game is probably one of our heaviest games on the list and that's shackleton base i probably don't have to tell you a lot about this one because there's a lot of posts on social media. It's making a lot of the list of what games to check out at Essen. And that's because it's designed by Fabio Lopiano and Nestor Mangioni. That's that's two games. If you're Euro fans, you know those two names. And so this is going to be a crunchy worker placement game. 
You're building a permanent base on the south pole of the moon. I love that idea. And that's one that we haven't explored before. You know, you're, you're going to have to draft some tiles that will not only give you the astronauts you need to make those moves, uh, but it's going to also dictate what you're doing that round. So I like that part of the game a lot. I love the pedigree of the designers. It's one I would definitely check out. Shackleton base. And it's got a really cool cover too. Said it a bunch of times on here. It only takes one or two things to get me excited about checking out a game. And this next one has two things that, that would appeal to me right away. That's Flatiron from Ludonova Games. It's got some gorgeous Weberson Santiago art on the, on the cover that kind of drew me in at first. But then the kicker was this 3D model of the famed building from New York City, the Flatiron building, that the players are going to be building around. It's a two-player game. It seems to be kind of a good mid-weight date night two-player game. Got a little bit of crunch there. It's going to take a little bit more time. So I don't know a lot about this game, but the 3D aspect of the Flatiron building combined with the artwork and the, the level of gameplay for two players, that has me intrigued. So I would definitely check that one out. The Svensons from Chili Fox Games are back. They were with Porta for a long time and made some of those Games that I love that I've talked about before, Revive and Bad Company in Santa Maria. But they're back with another one, this time an animal park theme game called Spectacular. And yes, there's been a lot of animal park theme games lately, but this one involves some dice instead of a big giant stack of cards. So already I'm kind of excited about that. And there's some Lanyap. Not only does it have that cool theme of saving the endangered species, but also there are some mission tiles that are included in the game that once you get the hang of the game, are going to make the game a little bit more difficult, a little bit more challenging each time. I like that line up there. So Spectacular from Chili Fox Games is one I would definitely check out of Essen. Next up on the list, another crunchy game, this time Pampero from Ape Games. Full disclosure, my buddy Carlos has done some of the graphic work on this game. So I've got a little bit of the behind the scenes, but I haven't played it yet. We're supposed to play it pretty soon if we can get rid of this hurricane thing. It's a crunchy game all about wind energy in Uruguay. So I kind of like that that theme. It's it's going to be some, you know, some kind of futuristic style thing in a modern day setting. But even more important, it's got hand management. And I like those games where you're looking at your hand and you're trying to figure out which cards you're going to play this. And at some point, you got to pull those cards back. Anytime we see a cool twist on that Concordia mechanism, I'm excited. And I would definitely check out Pampero. In fact, I hope to be playing it soon, and I'll get a video out to show you our thoughts about just some first impressions before Essen about how it played. Okay, going way back to high school, I've always loved video games that involve some kind of competition amongst your friends, where whether it's competing with Olympics or Super Mario type of games. And this next one, Golden Cup, just builds on that. Yes, it sounds a lot like Challengers, which was my you know top three game of the year when it came out. But this is Golden Cup from Cranio Creations is designed by Simone Luciani along with Gabrielle Bobola. And yes, it's about the Fantasphere. This big giant competition where up to six players are gonna build up their team and then go through these one-on-one -on -one matches. I, I don't know a lot yet, but all of those, all of those thematic elements, that, that's gonna just uh, just grab me by the by the shirt and say, let's come play this at the booth. So I would definitely check out Golden Cup. If nothing else, I want to see what Simone Luciani does with this one-on-one -on -one match. We're all going to take on each other and try to win the cup. I want to see what, what Simone's take is going to be on that with Golden Cup. So I would check it out. Next game is not a new game per se. This the original version came out in 2005 by Stefan Dora. This is Sardinia slash uh, Krita, which is getting a new release by Playty Games. And Playty Games did a new release of Can't Stop a year or two ago that I absolutely adored. It's like a box that becomes the board. And I don't know if they're doing that with this particular one. I know they, they have some other games in that in that uh, box L format. I don't think Sardinia is, so I don't want to mis mislead you on that. But what I do like is the fact that Play T is putting in this game with new artwork, bringing back this one hour area control game. And if I'm going to play an area control game, that's what I'm looking for. A game like the Wolves, where I'm not spending two or three hours beating up on everybody and, you know, king making after all that time. More, It's more just, uh, let's get right to the action. Let's get right on top of each other and decide who's going to win each of these areas. And that's what Sardinia looks like. It's one I would check out if I were at Essen. Each year on this list, I like to include a game from Oink Games. And when I scoured the list, 
something popped up right away. That's Souvenirs from Venice. It's designed by Jun Sasaki. Now, we know uh, that designer because that's a fake artist goes to New York and Deep Sea, uh, Deep sea Adventures. And that's what this game looks like. Well, not the first one, more the latter. It looks like a Venice-styled game, maybe even a more friendly-style game than Deep Sea Adventure where the players are going to put out all these tiles and they have a gondola and they're going to move their gondola around. They're going to flip the tiles trying to collect souvenirs and it gets even easier as you go further and further away. But here's the problem. If you go too far, your flight's going to take off and, you, and you're stuck in Venice with all these souvenirs. So it's kind of that push your luck thing that, that came from Deep Sea Adventure. Uh, I like the way the game looks. I generally like those oink games. So this is what I this is what I'd bring home. Okay, now I told you I only had 15 games, but I'm going to throw in a little bit of Lanyap. And that's just because of the theme. The next one and the last one is Paella Park from Zombie Paella. And this is a theme park game. I always have to include theme park games because I love that. I love that setting. But it's not the management game. I've been looking for the perfect management game like uh, that uh, roller coaster tycoon that I played on computer so many years ago. And I haven't quite found it, although a lot of games have come close. Um, like Tin Penny Parks and Dice Theme Parks. That's all games that have come pretty close. But this is not that. This game, Paya Park, is about visiting the park. So you're, the park's there. You're just trying to have the best day of going around the park. So we're not really managing it. We're just riding. So you've got the point-to-point -point movement of, of, a, of a game about visiting a park, but you also have this push-your-luck aspect that just looks really intriguing there's even like a little wheel that you're going to spin that kind of looks like those things you see in an amusement park so i'm not so sure about the artwork that's not exactly the style that i like but the weight looks right up my alley and just for the fact that it's a theme park yes board game publishers i would i'd buy this game and bring it home to try it just because of the theme so all right so that's our top 15 games coming out at essence spiel what games would make your list? I'm curious, so post in the comments below. And until next time, les élèves bon temps roulés.